On your neck, once that truss rod insert has dried, you know, it sticks up just a little bit. And so we want to trim that down and we could just sand that, just take some time. Uh, we could go over to that horizontal, horizontal belt sander, just kind of sand that whole thing down. That's an option. An easier way is to take a little block plane um, or any hand plane and just plane it down. So come get to a bench vise and just put your neck in the bench vise. Just have it be sticking up a little bit proud. And then we'll take a little block plane and just plane it down until it's nice and even. Just long strokes all the way along the whole thing. You'll get little curl shavings to come off and it'll just slowly get this down nice and even all the way down with the rest of your neck. You can still do a little bit of sanding, touch up to flatten it out even more if you need to. You can just feel if it's flat anywhere and just any high spots you can still hit if needed or just clean it up with that hand plane. We're going to cut a tenon on the very end of our neck here. And I've got a couple things that'll help us with that. I've got a jig that we're gonna use for cutting that. And also we've got a, a router. And the router bit that's in here is just a straight cutting bit, but it has a little ball bearing at the bottom. And so we'll get this set up. We're just gonna take our little jig and clamp it into a bench vise. And it kinda just has to sit up at an angle and just tighten. Make sure that's not going anywhere has these little clamps on here that'll help hold your neck in place. You're gonna wanna find a center line and draw a center line on your neck, basically centered with your truss rod insert there. Just draw that all the way up because when you put that on here, there's a little center line also on our template. You're gonna line those up. Just make sure everything's nice and straight and tight. And then we'll take those little blue clamps and clamp this into place so it doesn't move. held nice and firm. And then this router bit, again, that has that little ball bearing there, that, that little ball bearing is just gonna roll and follow the outline of our little jig here. So it's gonna remove all the stuff except for this little tenon here. And it's important that we don't go too deep. The depth, I've marked it here, just 5 eighths of an inch down from the top. That's your final depth, just a little mark right there. But to remove five eighths of an inch in one pass is quite a bit. And so I've actually adjusted this bit so that when you place it there, you'll see it's not quite reaching that line yet. So we're gonna do a couple passes. We're gonna do the whole thing with it that deep. Then we're gonna change the, the bit depth all the way down to that little line, five eighths of an inch down, and then run it again, and that should get everything. And we'll go ahead and just follow the outline. done it's very important when you shut this off do not lift up the router let it fully stop and then remove it if you lift it up before it stops you might accidentally hit the bit into the side of my jig and then ruin the jig so keep it tight until the bit stops so you can see we've done a little bit now we're going to go ahead and change the bit height and go all the way down to our little mark that we did that five eighths of an inch and we'll do that whole same thing again so we just loosen the quick release and then the entire router will just twist and you can raise or lower the bit. And so I place the entire router in the jig and then I get it set to the right height before I tighten it back up. Just get it right to our mark and then tighten up the little quick release. And then we're ready to go.
let it stop fully before you lift it out of there. We should be able to just undo our clamps. And you'll see we've got our little tenon cut. Before we go and cut out the shape of our neck here, we're gonna add a little head plate to this part over here. It's a little easier to do this now and then cut the shape out after this is attached. You can just get one of these from the teacher um, and this is just gonna cover up that top part of your neck. I have a little template I've made. It's a little head plate truss rod hole template. What we need to make sure of is we still have access to adjust the truss rod here. And so if you just glue on your head plate, it's gonna cover up the truss rod and you can't adjust your truss rod. So we're gonna drill a little hole into your head plate so that we can still access that. Place it over your head plate and trace that hole. We'll go to the drill press with a 3 8 inch twist bit and just drill out that hole for the truss rod. And we're just gonna drill several holes. We'll start just right where it first is, drill here and then next to it and then kind of down the line. And then to clean up all the middle part, you can kind of just drill in between. Also, you can kind of just move your board back and forth when it's inside and it'll kind of just clean it all up. We can also kind of sand it up a little bit. quite a bit of wood that you're still drilling through for your next pass. make sure that the very edge of this lines up right where the neck has that angle happen. So it should be right there is where it starts. And then just centered above your truss rod hole. And we'll just glue and clamp it on. And spread the glue around so it covers the whole surface and use some hand screw clamps clamp this on. It's going to be slipping and sliding a little bit when you try to clamp it, so it's helpful to have someone else hold things while you're trying to put the clamps on as well. I usually use about three clamps for this. Just make sure it's nice and tight. Let that dry about 30 minutes.